clean water in the city of Toronto. The city of Toronto is located on the southwestern shores of Lake Ontario in Ontario, Canada. It is Canada's largest city, fourth largest in North America. The demand for clean water is steadily climbing. Every day we use water for sh sinks, toilets, for showers, and laundry. Other uses include industries and office buildings. Water is our most important resource. Let's see how the city makes sure it provides for clean water to its residents. First, some history of the clean water treatment in Toronto. Old Toronto, formerly called York, had a population of 5,000 to 10,000 residents in the 1870s. The Island Water Treatment Plant resides on the site of Toronto's first water treatment plant. Four water facilities of different types have been constructed at the same site over the years. The first of these consisted of an infiltration basin built in 1874 with a filtration capacity of 20,500 cubic meters per day and a volume of 60,500 cubic meters. The basin was connected to the John Street pumping station 3.2 kilometers away on the city side of Toronto Bay by means of a 1200 millimeter wooden pipe across the island and a 900 millimeter cast iron pipe across the harbor. The second plant was a 182,000 cubic meter per day slow sand filtration plant constructed from 1909 to 1911. This plant continued in service until 1968. The third plant, a Vermeer mechanical drifting sand filter plant with a capacity of 273,000 cubic meters per day, was constructed during the First World War. The current and last plant constructed, a modern high-rate direct filtration plant, was constructed from 1975 to 1977 and placed in service in April 1977. Current organization. Each day, the city of Toronto treats more than 1 billion liters of potable water. This is done through a complex process that involves four water treatment plants. The ultimate goal is to provide residents and businesses with safe, clean drinking water that meets or exceeds federal and provincial water quality standards. In Toronto, we're especially fortunate to live on the shores of the Great Lakes. The city draws water from Lake Ontario to all its water treatment plants, which is cleaned and treated to create safe drinking water for residents and businesses. The Toronto water system also has four wastewater treatment plants in operation. Island Water Treatment Plant. Site of Toronto's first water treatment plant on Toronto's Centre Island, the percentage of plant water produced to the city's overall system, 20%. Average daily production, 237 million liters, but it could produce over 800 million liters. The R.C. Harris Water Treatment Plant. Percentage of water produced to the city's overall system, 34%. Average daily production, 406 million liters, but it could produce over 900 million liters. 
began operating on November 1, 1941. The R.L. Clark Water Treatment Plant. Percentage of plant water produced to the city's overall system, 27%. Average daily production, 328 million liters, but it could produce over 800 million liters. Opened November 22, 1968. The F.J. Horgan Water Treatment Plant. Percentage of water produced to the city's overall system, 19%. Average daily production, 231 million liters, but it could produce over 800 million liters. Began operating in 1979 and is the newest plant. The water treatment process. Let's look a little closer at the water treatment process at the largest treatment plant in Toronto. The R.C. Harris Water Treatment Plant is located in the eastern part of the city. The plant takes raw water from Lake Ontario and converts it to safe, potable water for final pumping into the city's drinking water distribution system. Here's how the system works. Water from Lake Ontario enters the two intake mouths, located approximately 1,300 meters from shore in 15 meters of water and proceeds through two 2,450 millimeter diameter concrete lined steel intake pipes in the bed of the lake to a junction shaft, then through 1,000 meters of 3,050 millimeter diameter tunnel in rock below the bed of the lake to the plant. Pre-chlorination. As the water enters the plant intake well at the top of the shore shaft, it is pre-chlorinated. During zebra mussel season, Pre-chlorination is applied at the intake mouths as a control measure. Screening. Eight 1.8 meter wide by 10 meter high traveling screens remove the larger suspended debris from the raw water. Originally, it was three screens. After expansion in 1956, five more were added. Raw water pumps. One 115 MLD, one 180 MLD, one 238 MLD, and three 275 MLD pumps lift the water from the lake to the mixing chambers at the north end of the plant, from which it flows by gravity through the rest of the process. The two intake mouths are supported by three pumps each. Pumps 8, 9, 10, and 11, 12, 13 are for the intake flumes. Pumps one to four are for treated water distribution. Pumps five to seven are pumps that pump treated water back up to the backwash filters. Here you can see that pumps 10 and 11 are in operation for the intake flumes and pumps 3A and 3B are for the treated water distribution. Coagulation, mixing and flocculation. In the raw water discharge piping, alum is added to form a jelly-like substance, which joins together with impurities forming larger particles called flock to aid in the settling and filtration processes. The water passes through a series of chambers to ensure that the alum is thoroughly mixed with the water to provide the best condition for formation of flock. Settling basins. After mixing and flocculation, the water passes very slowly through six settling basins, during which time the flock settles to the bottom, carrying with it most of the suspended impurities. The cleaner water at the top of the settling tanks proceeds to the filters. Filtration Basins Settled water passes through 40 dual media filters. The filter media consists of 0.5 meters of graded gravel with the largest size on the bottom, covered by 0.3 meters of sand, topped by 0.3 meters of anthracite or granular activated carbon. In the filters, 
The remaining suspended impurities, as well as some bacteria and other microorganisms, are removed. It also removes taste and odor-producing chemicals from the water. Slow-moving brushes keep lifting up dirt from the bottom. Backwashing, cleaning the filters. The filters are cleaned by reversing the flow of the water, backwashing, pushing up water and dirt through the filters. A rotating brush is scrubbing off the dirt from the top layer. The backwash water goes into the decant tanks, 10 of them. The decanted water goes back to the lake. The bottom four feet are desludged to the thickeners. Remaining water from the thickeners goes back to the lake. Sludge screws. Sludge screws compact the sludge and deposit it into containers to be trucked away. Safe levels of chlorine are added to kill any harmful microorganisms. The city adds a safe level of fluoride, 0.6 milligrams per liter, to prevent cavities. Storage Basin. The purified water goes into holding basins prior to distribution. Excess chlorine is removed with sulfur dioxide, or sodium bisulfate. Ammonia is added to combine with the residual chlorine. Combined with the chlorine, it persists much longer in the distribution system. Testing. The treated water is tested regularly to ensure quality and safety. The control room. The main control room where all the programmable logic control devices are controlled from. They control pumps, water levels, flows, chemicals, and more. There are also several remote control stations at different locations at the plant. Treated water pumping and distribution. The treated water is pumped into the distribution system, to storage, and to the consumer. Pumping stations and storage are spread out through the system to ensure safe and reliable distribution to the consumer. There are 11 water reservoirs, four elevated storage tanks, 18 pumping stations, and thousands of kilometers of distribution and trunk water mains. Now the water is ready to be used by residents. Bathroom use, for example, accounts for roughly 50% of a person's indoor use. More about wastewater treatment in Toronto in the next episode.